Good morning. So welcome to the Women of Color Conference 2016. Uh, it's so nice to see so many familiar faces. Um, I think that we're going on to our 12th year of this conference, and it's so nice to see so many new faces and so many familiar faces that come every year. It's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful to see so many faces, and um, this is going to be um, a really we have a really great panel of speakers. Um, we always learn a lot, and uh, we always enjoy putting on this event for all of you. Um, before we get started, um, we're going to use uh, the clickers that Danielle just spoke about, so um, you can just get them out. So we'll just get them get everyone warmed up with those speak with these uh, clickers. Um, the first question: Which group? of women in the United States is more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer? A, white women. B, African American women. C, Hispanic women. Or D, um, choices A and B. And you just click the, um, you can, out, right outside where you register. Okay. We signed it. How do you register? So you just click the, um, the letter or number that corresponds to the choice. So, so far we have 26 responses. Okay, you got it? Okay. All right. So great. So many of you have been keeping up with the news. So last year, in the past three years, when I, I would use this same question, um, we would say that the answer was A, um, white women. But now, um, and I'll go into this later, the answer is choice D. So um, for those of you that answered A, um, you know, I can understand why you answered that because that would have been the correct answer last year or two years ago because we've done this question before, but the correct answer is now D, and we'll go into that later. Next question. Which group of women is, in the United States is more likely to die from breast cancer? A, white women, B, African American women, C, Hispanic women, D, Asian women. So good, that's correct. B, African American women. African American women are disproportionately affected by breast cancer um, and we are more likely to die and we're, go that's, um, we're gonna get into that and that's the whole purpose of why we do this conference. Last question. Women who are at average risk for breast cancer and have no health insurance, should A, not worry about having a mammogram, B, should enroll in the New York State Cancer Service, Services Program, C, should pay for their annual mammogram, or D, none of the above? So correct. All right. Of course, many women feel that if they have no insurance, they have no way of getting a mammogram. And in New York State, there are means to get a mammogram if you don't have one. The Cancer Services Program is a statewide program that provides um, uh, free screening for uninsured and underinsured women. And it's offered throughout the city in all five boroughs. And uh, we should have information. If it's not in your packet, we can give you information on how you can get a free mammogram. So, breast cancer. Why is it a public health issue? Um, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in nearly every racial and ethnic group, um, with almost 40,000 fatalities a year. It's the le second leading cause of death in women in this country today. Um, 
even though with all the advances in the treatment for breast cancer, um, we've reduced um, bre the death mortality rate from bre by bre in breast cancer by up to 34% in certain communities. However, not all communities are benefiting from all of these treatments. Um, so for every 22 women that die from breast cancer, 30 white women, 31 women, black women will die from breast cancer per 100,000 women. So if you look at this, um, this t table I have here, if you look at this is non-Hispanic white women and non-Hispanic black women, um, the mortality weight rate for um, black women is at 31 per 100,000 women, for white women is 21,000. So we have the highest mortality rate. Um, what's happened also in the past, um, over the past decade, is that our incidence, the amount of, the number of uh, black, uh, women that are, black women that are getting breast cancer has crept up. So we're about even with white women. We always used to say that we don't get breast cancer at the same rate as white women, but we're about the same. So we reached this milestone last year. Um, uh, this was published last year and it was covered in the New York Times. And so this is a milestone we did not really want, want to reach. Um, and so the impact that breast cancer is going to have on African American women over the next 10 years remains to be seen, but we do think it's gonna have an even greater impact. So when you look more clear, carefully at the um, black to white breast cancer mortality ratio, this is a pretty busy slide with lots of squiggly lines, but just to um, um, break, it down more, um, break it down a little bit more, each line rec um, represents a different city in the country. Um, this, this line right here is, um, let's see if I can come on and just come out here. The X is, is the country overall, national average of the black to white, black to white ratio is 1.4. Um, so, and if you look at Memphis, Memphis has the highest black to white ratio. So black women who are diagnosed with breast cancer in Memphis are twice as likely to die from breast cancer than white women. Um, this is Los Angeles. Black women are, um, Los Angeles is just as high or a little bit greater. Then we have Chicago, New York is the lowest. They looked at 50 cities. Um, and overall, um, f um, five women per day are dying from breast cancer, largely due to disparities. So even when you factor in all the genetic factors, um, we are still looking at a, a large uh, disparity that remains to be um, eliminated. Um, so we think that the New York is one of low, has one of the lower rates because of the large um, city hospital system. Um, that allows women um, who are underserved to get better treatment in the city, but we still have a lot of work to do and over 40%, there's a 40% greater mortality rate for black women nationally that we need to address. Um, among Hispanic women, while overall Hispanic women have a lower mortality rate than the national rate, we have to look at subset of, subsets of Hispanic women. And not many studies have done that quite well, this is hot off the press. This was just published last week and announced at the Avon Breast Cancer Crusade. Um, when you su look at subset analysis of um, uh, Hispanic women, Puerto Rican women and Mexican women have greater mortality rates. Um, so they're more likely to die from breast cancer. And this is very helpful because we need to look at, we need to know where we can focus our resources and which groups. So this, is, um, this study was just published in the Journal of Cancer Epidemiology. Um, so New York has one of the lower um, uh, mortality rates. However, we still have pockets um, of New York, especially in New York City, where we still have work to do. Um, one reason why we have better, um, better results is because we have, we're very more, we're more progressive as far as breast cancer screening and resources. This was just, um, this is a law that was just passed this year. If you're not aware of it, I just wanna bring this to your attention. This was passed by Mario Cuomo. This is the New York State breast cancer screening legislation. Um, have you guys heard about it? No. So you, you, anyone know about it? No. Um, okay, so just a few of you know about it. So let me tell you what it is. And you, everyone should know, be aware of it. Well, it was passed at the end of June. It takes effect later this year. 
And what it does is it, it means that all hospitals and clinics have to extend their screening hours by at least four hours per week, okay, for mammography screening, okay? Um, it eliminates the annual deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurance payments, or otherwise known as cost sharing, for all screening mammograms for women. And in addition, it eliminates cost sharing for diagnostic imaging. So that's for the ultrasounds, additional diagnostic mammos, and MRIs. So there's no out-of-pocket costs. Okay? Do you understand that? Okay. So in addition to that, um, public employees in cities with over a million, so that's New York City, are now allowed four hours of leave for, to allow for breast cancer screening, um, for breast cancer screening. We actually just got an email earlier this week about it because I work at Bellevue. So New York State employees had that, um, uh, had that benefit, but now New York City employees also receive that same benefit. So if you work for the city, your boss should allow you to go for your screening and you get four hours for that, okay? When it was passed? Uh, it was at the end of June of this year. So you can Google it, or you just go to the NewYorkState.gov um, website and it's on there. And just uh, Googling um, uh, breast cancer screening legislation. Um, so we still have a lot of work to do to address this breast cancer racial gap. Um, why it is that we have this 40% um, disparity. Um, it's been covered in the New York Times. Harold Freeman, who pioneered um, patient navigation, also discussed it. And it, it, it has to do with more than just um, access to treatment, access to adequate treatment, access to adequate screening mammography facilities. These are all really important because it's not, it's not even where, it's not just getting the screening, it's also where you go and getting quality screening. Um, it's important to understand your risk, talk to your doctor, um, let them know about your family history. Your doctor can't help you if you don't give them all your information. That also means you have to talk to your family about your family history. And don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, what other things you can do to um, uh, um, alleviate your risk and, and is just le leading a healthy life, exercise, um, even if it's starting slowly with walking. We know that obesity has um, an impact on, on breast cancer. So it's important to just get your health down, get your weight down, whether it's just walking with, with your friends or just um, moving for 30 minutes. You are what you eat. So um, I'm not gonna steal Maudine's um, thunder because she's talking later about this, but um, I'm gonna just stop right there. And if you smoke, don't smoke. Anyone who sees me as a patient knows that I nag them to death about that. So I'm just gonna um, move on from there. But you have, if you are smoking, you have to quit. Um, I can't say this enough. You have to know your family history. I can't help a patient if they don't know their family history. And many of us don't like to talk about our history. We just say someone had cancer and that's it. You know? um, but it's so important because it can play a role in, your, in whether or not you, you're at risk for getting breast cancer. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but um, these are some of your risk factors um, in your family for whether or not you may have breast cancer. Obviously, if you've had breast cancer at a young age, um, you're, at, you're more likely to maybe have a breast cancer gene that is gonna have an impact on you and also your children. Um, what was recently added to um, the guidelines for referral to, bre to um, genetic testing is having triple negative breast cancer, which of course, we as African American women are more likely to get. So anyone, any woman who's been, who's been diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer 60 years of, old, years of age or younger automatically should be, um, should be uh, referred for genetic testing, okay? And many physicians themselves don't know that. So there's education on the part of both the physicians and the patients to, know, to, um, to uh, understand these, um, these guidelines. Um, so, and it's important because many women across the country, not just African-American women, are diagnosed with uh, the BRCA mutation um, after their diagnosis. We wanna change that, we wanna shift that so that they're diagnosed before so they can 
they can make um, decisions about their health. Some women may choose to have prophylactic surgery. And young women and African-American women tend to be ignored. Um, we tend to think that the gene tends to affect um, Ashkenazi Jewish women, yes, mostly, but it does, this gene affects all women. And in fact, the BRCA2 mutation is more common in African-American women. Most people don't know that. And um, there was an article that was published last year that um, actually, um, uh, they actually tested women under the age of 50, African-American women, who were diagnosed with breast cancer and, re and tested them for the gene and found out that 12% of these women, African-American women, actually had the BRCA mutation. So you won't know unless you test these women. So it's very, very important. So I'm just gonna end here, because I wanna, there's, we have a lot of great speakers here and I want you to hear from them. Um, I'm gonna end with this um, just three minute clip from The Emperor of All Maladies. Have you all heard of this documentary in the book? Um, uh, I think this is a, a really great, um, really good clip that I think um, many of you will, um, will kind of illustrate what we've all, many of you probably have gone through. Let's see if I can. Oh my God, they're gonna make us go through an ad. <laughs> Yeah? I don't think so. I'm sorry. I gotta go through the ad. Um, how do I get the volume? Let me pause that in. <laughs> it looks like tasty. You're a funny boy. You know that? Mommy likes cherries. It's been a month since Lori's diagnosis and her 20 week yeah. regimen of chemotherapy has begun. Oh, like some. Yum, 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 yum. I know. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. How you going? Nice to meet you. I know, Kurt. Yeah. Thank you. My husband actually is going to shave his head with me, and so we will, until my hair grows back, we'll both be bald together. He's my rock. He's been there for everything. He's looking good. Y'all forget I've been bald headed before 20 years ago. Yeah, before Laura and I got together in the first winter when I grew my hair, and then Laura liked my hair and my hair and shaved it since. Oh, what a story. Yes, so You can take it all. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Emperor of All Maladies actually is a, is a really great documentary about cancer. I chose this clip because Dr. It's, She's, Dr. Wilson is herself a surgical oncologist who takes care of cancer, cancer patients and, um, and was diagnosed not just with actually bilateral breast cancer. So she, when she found out she, had, she felt a lump and they worked her up and they actually found that she had cancer on the other side. Um, so uh, cancer doesn't follow the rules. Um, you know, it can affect young women, older women, black women, women of all races. So this is why we do what we do. Um, you know, we're here trying to address all of these disparities. And, um, you know, I, and as we said, this is, um, you know, we want really, this is why we continue to educate women. This is why we put on this program, um, because we're trying to reach out to um, all of you and emphasize the importance of um, screening mammography. Um, so we have a great, um, I'm just going to get back to my. We have a great panel of speakers. I just want to. Quickly, um, you're going to hear about clinical trials um, and advances in um, cancer screening. Um, Maudine Nelson is going to talk about nutrition. And you're also going to hear about our exciting new launch of our uh, breast can't be welters, breast what health outreach and navigation program. So um, don't leave, okay? <laughs> Stay till the end, because it's going to only get more and more um, interesting and exciting um, as we move on, okay? Thank you so much.